euro bond, two billion, accruing interest between 12 to almost 16 percent. Those debts must be paid, and they'll be paid by the people of Kenya, not by William Ruto or Regadi Gashagwa. It is the people of Kenya. Us being part of Kenya will pay through paying taxes. Ah, these people shouting left, right, and center, telling us to default so that we can be blacklisted as a banana republic. Are they telling us not to pay the euro bond? Are they telling us not to pay what we owe the local banks? We want them to come and tell us. Don't just shout. Offer a solution. These debts are on record. We did not borrow as we were in the forest. William Ruto Aligua Metengwa Inja, he was not attending cabinet. He was not attending the National Security Council. He was not part of committing the country to those debts. But he is the President of the Republic of Kenya. He inherited those debts. He has to figure out how they have to be paid. And we are inviting you, good people, to help us with ideas of what we do, how we can go about it, how do we avoid them in the future. Through continuous engagement, through bilateral and multilateral diplomacy, the president has traveled around the country, the world, engaging multilateral leaders, the IMF, the World Bank, key partners, the United States, the People's Republic of China, currently he has just left Germany for France, to see how we partner with the world to get us out of the mess we are in. And it has started to pay. Yesterday, the World Bank made a huge pronouncement of 12 billion US dollars in the next three years. Concession alone on very low interest, as opposed to trying to borrow money here from local, from local banks. The IMF, four days ago, made a similar announcement of a huge intervention. We have public roads that have all stored. They need, we need to get the contractors back on site. We have to get this money somehow. We did not create this situation. We found it. And they are uncomfortable when we say that's the situation we found. What do they want us to say? You people know you manage companies. You know you look at the state of the books when you take over a company. You take a company that is in the red, you know what to do with it. You take a going concern, you know what to do with it. But as we didn't have a choice, Kenya is ours. We took it the way it was because this is our country. If we had, another, if we had a choice, we would have looked for another company, not Kenya. <laughs> because of the huge debt portfolio through irresponsible borrowing. When we tell the story, because we are going to tell the story, people will be shocked how two billion US dollars was taken from the central bank and put in a private bank that is responsible for the situation we are in, the weakening of the shilling. And people want to sit there and we know what they did. And we had said, let bygones be bygones. But there's a good discussion. We are going to have a good discussion. We are putting the figures into place. Who took what and where? So that the people of Kenya can know why we are in this shit and this mess. To be fair to everybody, how do people expect a government to fix a 10-year mess in one year, a mess of 10 years, through state capture, conflict of interest, outright theft of public resources, irresponsible borrowing, misuse of public funds, misapplication, misapplication of funds into useless legacy projects. And here we are. We must be truthful to the people of Kenya because it's important that we be truthful to the people of Kenya.
And when the people of Kenya finally know the truth, they will make a judgment, an assessment on who is right and who is wrong. But what I can assure you, the president and the rest of us are determined to fix this economy, and this economy we shall fix it. And they are good signs. And signs are last year, for the first time in eight years, at the closure of financial year at midnight on June 30th, we had given every cent owed to the county governments. And previously, we had arrears of five to six months for county governments, for years. By the closure of financial year on June 30th, we had disbursed every, the last coin to the constituency development funds. For the first time, we have no arrears for our elderly men and women for their monthly stipend. We found an arrears for eight months for those senior citizens who need that 2,000 to buy drugs to buy food. We have cleared all that. Today, they get their stipend before civil servants are paid. And we have said, let anybody who has an idea on how to fix this economy come and talk to us. I want on behalf of the president to welcome you as ISPAC. Come and talk to our people at the National Treasury and we'll talk, ask you to talk to the president and all of us are aligned. This is our country and as I said, we don't know everything. If you have better ideas than we have, this is our country, we have no other country. Please come and talk to us and whatever you advise us, if it's prudent, if it can get us out of the quagmire that we find ourselves in, we shall say a Sunday sun. So please, you are most welcome. I've heard you talk about pending bills, it's true. The president, in his wisdom, has put a committee where your members are represented, led by Ouko, former uh, Auditor General, an eminent Kenyan, Another group of very eminent professionals, I saw them when the president was inaugurating the team. Men and women of integrity to scrutinize, verify and validate pending bills so that those that are payable we can pay and put that history of pending bills behind us. We saw many Kenyans lose their homes. We saw families break up. We saw people commit suicide as a result of pending bills. Government documents became worthless. Previously, during the Kibaki regime, you could walk to any financial institution with an LPU and get LPU financing 50% without a question because the documents had credibility. People knew that you are given a contract by government, it is payable. Today, there is no bank or uh, microfinance institution that will honor an LPO because you supply it two, three, four, five years down the line, you have not been paid. We want to restore the sanctity of government LPOs and LSO and contracts so that they become bankable, that you can walk to a bank and get cash against it to carry out the works that you have been given. So that is ongoing. Again, you have said you have your issues of the remuneration role. You have explained to me there and here. And what we have agreed, I'll create the framework. My office has been tasked by the president the responsibility of coordinating constitutional commissions and independent offices. I'm the one who does that coordination in my office. So we have agreed with the chair. I'll call that forum for you the Attorney General and no other people involved, we begin that conversation so that, that like your counterparts, the lawyers and other professionals, you can have your own remuneration role. There is too much competition. Even these lawyers, I can tell you, because some of us have a share of here. And we will be able to role to negotiate because we are not going to be able to do it. We are not going to be able to do it. 
It is good to have the remuneration role as a benchmark. But you are also many. You have told me you are 35,000. 28,000 are in practice. So mutashindana tu pole pole. So that Kenyans can also get the best deal. So that one I'll do. Again, you have talked about too many regulations and uh, will help the members of the National Assembly are here, the Attorney General is there. We can agree on how to fast track the review of these regulations so that we can collapse them into something that is making sense so that we don't have too many laws for the same person doing the same thing. So that is something we can help in terms of fast tracking with the leader of the National Assembly in Parliament, with the Attorney General, with our legal drafters, we can work together and we can help you to fast track that one. The MP for Molo, uh, KK, my good friend, has said about you people being targeted when there are investigations. It is true. Even the procurement people, they were here crying the same. <laughs> it is true, and it's, 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 it's very sad. And I said, and I want once more to reiterate to ACC and DCI, please hire professionals to be your investigators. Hire accountants, hire procurement people who can advise you on how the investigation is going. You find some of these policemen, they have no idea about accounting. You know? So, he, he is being asked to interrogate you and write statements on things that himself he cannot comprehend. You know? I, I, from a personal experience on how absurd our investigative agencies can be when they are investigating complex matters beyond their pay grade. When we were fighting to come to government and the previous government targeted me for persecution because of my political stand, which was very firm, and decided to try to blackmail me to change my stand. They sent CID officers all over my life to look around my life for 50 years and turn it around and see whether they can get something. So I had put some money in a microfinance for eight years. Fixed deposit, 200 million. Money I had earned through hard work, saved, put 200 million. And through good advice by accountants, told me put this money in the fixed deposit and leave all the interest. And I stopped working. I put it, I negotiated for 13%. And every month I was getting 1.9 million, which is money actually I did not need. It's too much. 1.9 million is too much for one person. <laughs> so I was living on the interest. I give a little to Pastor Dorcas. You know, she's a pastor, she doesn't need a lot of money. <laughs> so, ingine kidogo, mimi nakula na marafiki. Ingine napereka kwa siyasa kidogo kidogo. So, this money is in my personal account. I put it on a core deposit for three months. So, every three months, it leaves my personal account, goes to a suspense account. It stays there at the end of the three months. In a rudish way, whatever more than interest, I remain with the interest, I reinvest it back. So that movement back and forth, four times a year, a corporal in police said, I have 800 million every year that is coming to the account. <laughs> you know, that movement back and forth. So they calculated for eight years, they said it's 12.4 billion. And they put up a case of 12.4 billion. And it's the same amount of money. The only 200 is the only money. There is no other money. Movement of back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So here, yeah, Nangalia Pale, Musho Pale, and the head Pale. Hey. They calculated, they say, this man, in eight years, he has gotten 12.4 billion. He needs to say where this money has come from. But it was the same 200 million. I tried to explain to him. But if they had an accountant or a banker in that bank 
Tugefika hapa kweli? It's just a roll over. We are trying to tell them what is a roll over. Nasema hiyo ni nini? Hawezi shika. And that is where you have found accountants have been called to record statement. The federal recording cannot understand what is it that you are saying. He has no idea about books of accounts. So I'm saying, ESCC, DCI, please, for you to deal with corruption and economic crimes, hire professionals in every field as your investigators. <laughs> have accountants, have procurement officers, have bankers, have all sorts of professionals for you to deal conclusively with economic crimes because they are complex. An ordinary policeman trained in the Kigajo cannot understand those things. And I want to say now that we have agreed on police reforms, we have agreed that we'll have a cadet entry so that we attract professionals. So that you enter at the level of an inspector when you are professional. I want to encourage professionals across the country. When we implement that reform, and there's a recruitment, please accountants come to the police force as a direct uh, cadets and come and help these people to deal with issues that are complex. These are difficult issues. Even ourselves and we are graduates, we, we are not able to understand those things. So that's why we hire accountants to advise us. That's why we hire lawyers to advise us, because you are not good at that profession. So, to avoid this harassment of professionals by police, let us bring in professionals in the investigation agencies, and things will be okay. Finally, you are aware we want to privatize all non-profit making state corporations so that we can give them to you people because you are the one who knows how to do business. The work of government is not to do business, PS. Our work is to give services. If you look at the sugar sector in Western Kenya, there are several factories, some are state-owned, others are private. The soil is the same. The environment is the same. The farmers are the same. The prices are the same. The only difference, some are managed by uh, government officials, others are private. Moroni, Mumias, Nzoia, Chemiril, managed by public servants, all dead. Butali, West Kenya, managed by the private sector, making profit. Why does government want to do business? That's not our work. Our work is to build roads, to provide security, to give health services. Let us leave business to the private sector so that the people who know how to run investments can do it professionally. So very soon, we are finalizing on the law. All these companies will be up for sale. pesa, and you run them. And you run them profitably. It's good for the country because once they are profitable, we shall collect corporate tax. We shall collect pay as you want so that uh, we can work efficiently. But we have no business as a government to put more money into non-profit making organizations. It is unwise, it's actually foolish to do so. And with that cannot continue. These are some of the hard decisions the president has to make. And the test of leadership, not just in Africa but in the world, is the ability for a leader to make hard decisions for his country. These decisions may look unpopular for now. For now. Because they are hard decisions. But in another 24 months, people will say these were the right decisions. Because hard decisions must be made. There is no other way of turning around this economy. And if we don't make hard decisions, we will all get into problems. Technology is the way to go. We have started ourselves as a government. We have digitized all our services. And you know, everything was being stolen. 
people had their own receipt books kwa national park mtu wako na receipt yake analipisha anapeana receipt anaweka pesa kwa mfuko before we digitized all our services we were collecting 60 million a day after we did we are collecting every day 350 million 600% increase the 290 million ilikuwa naenda kwa mifugo ya wanaume and there was a lot of resistance there was a lot of resistance and we said if you cannot agree that we digitize our services we pay through one pay bill number kutembea wende nyumbani we are now at 350 and our progression when we look at the full potential in another three months we'll be able to collect a billion every day for this country so let everybody embrace digitization of government services na wengi hata wamewacha kazi because they were not living on the salary they were living on uh, collecting money in cash so that one is going to continue because there is no other way of 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 going about it uh finally you talked about your scheme of service those who are in the public sector we are willing to have that conversation i'm in charge of public sector reforms we are willing to engage you as ispac on behalf of those who serve in the public sector so that we can agree with the public service commission and the ministry of public service on a scheme of service to encourage career progression and to have a very defined structure on how you rise in the service so that you don't just work and you are not sure about tomorrow so if we are able to do that i think uh, things should be able finally i was very happy to note that 60% of your membership are our women pongezi congratulations you know accountants are very important people because the issue of integrity and being honest is very important so i'm very happy that 60% are women because most women are very honest that's <laughs> right myself i hang around with a lot of women in my office all the key areas in mapatia wa mama because abana wezi quite a number a few ni wakora lakini the whole a few manga kidogo wanakaa kama wanaume lakini sisi wazee tuko wakora kidogo so i'm very happy that most you 60% of your members are women and we want to encourage our women to fight for your space in every sector in this country including leadership be women of substance you have something to offer because you offer service from the heart you are very genuine and compassionate in what you believe in so we would want to see more women in leadership and i can tell you from the cabinet we have eight women the one at toa jasho they work and they work from the heart they are so passionate in what they do we want to see more women in the judiciary we want to see more in the cabinet we want to see more in the private sector we want women to take up their right of space in the management of the affairs of this country and they in terms of economic activities kwa hivyo mimi nimeshukuru sana i have learned several things and you know sisi watu watu jasoma sana ukikaa na watu wamesoma unafaidika najua when we were studying biology uh, there were two processes in biology one was called osmosis what was the other one called kimani uh, yeah diffusion so bila nimekaa hapa ukikaa na watu wamesoma through diffusion and osmosis <laughs> una hata wewe unapata so <laughs> So I feel more educated and more learned by just sitting around with you people. So mkinita tena nitakuja. Mkitaka nimletee rais atakuja. Yeah.
at least rais ako na bahati you cannot intimidate me ako na degree tatu sio kama mimi niko na moja so he he will be more comfortable with you guys uh, me i'm a little bit intimidated but nangangana tu you know so we we are very grateful and uh, we look forward to engagement please continue discussing your issues talk about our country let us talk about our economy na tafadhali the 5% imeongea juu yake 95% nyinyi watu wazuri eh wazuri sana in 5% nyinyi ndio mtu atuharibu sisi you are the one who come to show us how to cook our books so that we evade tax nyinyi there is nobody who evades tax without an auditor hakuna mwananchi ya kawaida anaweza koroka hiyo vitabu aepuke nyinyi ndio wajuaji ya kukoroka vitabu you people matters tax evasion you guys are in it you are the ones who sit down with the directors of companies and show them bila watakoroka vitabu na ndio unaona mtu akiitwa na KRA anasema ngoja nitafute accountant yako kwanza <laughs> nobody is willing to talk to KRA without a fellow there it's like a lawyer <laughs> on matters tax so please be good people be patriotic to your country let people pay what they owe don't assist them to cook books you know let them just pay what is due so that we can build roads we can buy medicine we can build more hospitals we can take care of the senior citizens and we can do all the other things that we need to do by the tax we have collected and ourselves on our part we have committed to make sure that the taxes are used for the purpose for which they have been collected we are sealing off loopholes for leakage and for stealing of uh, public funds so that the people of Kenya once they pay tax they can see what the tax is doing with those very many remarks asante sana na mungu wabariki thank you sisa kindly remain on the dais for brief photo station flanked by